Hi, everybody. This is Matt again from Healthy Framework. Today, I'm super excited to be joined by Zach Williamson, the creator and manager of the Love Nudge app. Zach, thank you so much for joining today. Hey, thank you, Matthew. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Excellent. Yes, and thank you. So, Zach, to get started, I want to ask you, what would you say separates Love Nudge from the rest of the dating apps that are out there? Okay, so that's a great question. Love Nudge is an app that's built to help strengthen relationships um, by utilizing the principles and the concepts found in the best-selling book, The Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. So it's built upon those principles. And those principles are not, it, this book, this book is over 30 years old and it, it has continually hit the bestsellers list. It's, you know, it does on Amazon, it ranks super high. It's still 30 years later. Why? Because it, it works. The concepts work. People have found it helpful. It's not just well-marketed. It's not just well-positioned. You don't, after 30 years, have those type of sales, which are over 20 million sales, um, and not have something in that book that is working. And so that's what this app is built on. It's, it's really built on those principles and helps people to not only discover um, each other's love language, but also links them together so that they can use those love love languages to help fill what we call the love tank, um, that emotional capacity for which somebody feels loved. Oftentimes you might hear somebody say, I feel loved or I don't feel loved in a relationship. And in those times, Dr. Ga Gary Chapman would, would say, well, it's because, you know, it's not necessarily because somebody's not trying to express love. They might say, hey, I'm trying here, but what's happening is they're missing it. And they're speaking like maybe they're doing the dishes um, and this person's like, I just need to hear you say it. Or maybe they're giving gifts and they're like, I just want time spent with you. So what the love languages does is it creates language, <laughs> no pun intended, but it creates language around how people give and receive love. And that's what makes it a very unique app in the market. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. And and I've done a, quite a few of these interviews and it's definitely a unique stance and take. And I'm familiar with the book. I've gone through it several times in the past uh, with everything. And it is amazing to see the staying power of the book and the knowledge within the book after all these years um, with everything. So excellent. So I think that was a, a really good uh, description of, of what separates you guys and then kind of playing off of that. How would you describe the ideal customer that Love Nudge is designed for? Well, Love Nudge is, is really designed for the kind of customer that they're not necessarily, it can work in a dating relationship, but it's also in just really someone who wants to improve their relationship. They want to learn how to express love and have sort of like a digital coach, so to speak. We we look at it as sort of like a uh, personal trainer for relationships that helps you do what you want to do, and that's to express your love well. And so the ideal customer is going to be somebody who is just willing to try. It's willing. It's somebody that's willing to say, you know what? I'll put the work in, I'll, I'll do what I need to do. And, um, and that's when it really turns uh, from theory into a reality for people and their relationship starts to get better. So ultimately it's somebody that decides that love is a choice that you make every day, not just a feeling that's immaturity, mm -hmm. but maturity is when you say, you know what, I'm choosing to love this person and I want, I want a little help in how to do that well. Yeah. So no, that's a great description, especially for, our readers or people watching this to help understand that it can be for anybody, not necessarily in a relationship, but the fact that they are choosing love there on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, changing gears a little bit, uh, what would you say is one area where you feel Love Nudge could be doing a better job on? Well, Love Nudge is really based on the attitude and the discipline of the user. So it kind of like I was saying, like, like say you download an exercise app. Well, that app isn't going to work for you if you don't work out. It's right. not going to work out for you. It's not going to put in the work. And so that ideal customer that's willing to put in the work, this app will serve really well because it can track the effort and the improvement that, that somebody makes. And, and with what's at stake there, it can really help encourage the kind of discipline that leads to real change in somebody's life. And so um, I think it does a really good job of that. And uh, one of the ways, one of the things that when we first dove into the you know, what, what could this look like? What could it do? Um, I was reading a book called Triggers by Mark Marshall Goldstein. Mm -hmm. I think it's Goldstein, Goldsmith, Goldstein, something like that. <laughs> and um, anyway, so 
the book's called Triggers. And in that, he was talking about how do you help habit formation? How do you help get people acquainted with that? And when I thought about that, I was, you know, co- coincidentally working on the Love Languages project. And, and I thought, you know what? How can we get people going from taking the quiz online, um, which over at this point, which is astonishing, um, just since 2010, we've had over 130 million people take that quiz. So it's a widely popular quiz. Yeah. And how can we take people from just taking a quiz and then two weeks later, like, what's your love language? Um, I don't know, chocolate. Like, we're not, you know, we want to really begin to reinforce these things so that people can see the benefits and the growth of what they're learning. And so we think the app does a really good job of that. And 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 think of it almost like a uh, a cross between a fitness app, uh, uh, like a goal setting type fitness app, and something that you can sort of track your progress in with like street technology. It will really help you um, to not only set goals that um, are related to um, whoever you're in relationship with, their love language, how to do that in creative and fun ways, but also what it does is it tracks that. And so over time, there's some stats ability to this where it'll actually show you where each day um, somebody has the opportunity to set the the level of their love tank. So it has a love tank status. And every day, if you're committed to it, you can set, you know, how love do I feel today? And and what you can do is you can actually correlate um, um, the love love tank status to um, your completion of certain goals with that love language. So maybe you see, maybe you've done something and uh, maybe the person that you're trying to speak their love language has quality time as their love language. And you put date night in the app as a goal. And that goal will pop up as often as you want. It could be monthly, it could be daily, it could be weekly. Yeah. Um, and once you complete that, it sort of adds a completion. So you could see the com- where you completed it, what day, and where was the love tank status. And so if you're doing certain ways of expressing your love, but then all of a sudden you see a coral, you see a correlation with, oh, that person, they feel really loved today. Oh, that's the same day I did the date night. Oh, I haven't done anything in a while. Oh, their love tank is getting a little lower. Mm-hmm. And, um, but inadvertently, sometimes you'll be speaking something and their love tank is still low. Yeah. And so it gives you the opportunity to then, you know, get outside of the app and have a conversation and say, Hey, you know what? We had a date night the other night, but I noticed your love tank was a little low. Um, and I want to, I want to speak love to you in a way that really matters to you. And so, you know, what's going on there? Let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the areas too, where people could kind of misunderstand the app a little bit, um, that they think that it's going to do that work for them and have those conversations for them. But sometimes it'll identify things as well that, can improve relationships, but they won't be improved unless you have those conversations and it can't do that for you. But yeah, um, I, I think one, one thing in moving forward into new features or new, new things would be, you know, what can we do a better job with is sometimes is people have utilized the love tank um, in a very vindictive way. <laughs> and I say that like, like I said, you got to be willing to do the work, but sometimes right. when people are immature, what they'll do is they'll have an argument with somebody and then they'll go in their app and just drop the love tank to zero. And it's very like uh, accusatory, vindictive, but if a couple is committed to, um, and we're working on some technology things that we might possibly end to put some stop gaps in there. So somebody yeah. can't just totally drop it. I mean, maybe like incrementally or something. There, there's some yeah. things that we're working out um, based off of some feedback. But um, but ultimately, if somebody uses the tool in a very healthy and honest way and is willing to not just be uh, vindictive or immature about it, um, it could really be of a benefit to them. That's awesome. I like it. And, and that's a really good segue into my next question, which was asking about, and I think you, you painted a little bit there, but are there some new features and, and things coming in the future months or years that you can speak to? Obviously, we don't want the secret sauce or anything that's too far behind the curve, but maybe a little peek of things that people could maybe be excited about that, that they could be seeing sometime soon. Absolutely. Yeah. We're always thinking, um, I'm a creative person. So I, I always have like a lot of different ideas, but you know, some of the areas that we want to expand into are we've had um, some feedback where people have asked for different relationships outside of a romantic relationship, like family or friends, or they want to be able to add other people. And so that's something that we're looking to try to 
uh, move towards a little bit, make it a little broader, make it so that you could set goals with um, with family members or friends or, or people that you just want to express love or appreciation to in a way that makes sense to them. And so we're working, that's something we're working on. And then another thing that we also envision is, um, and this kind of coincides with the love language quiz online and the website as well, is we want to move into different language translations. So mm -hmm. currently we only have it in English, but we also want to start like um, incrementally rolling out some different language translations, probably the first of which would be Spanish and, and help people um, that speak different languages grow closer in their relationships as well. We already have books translated in over 50 languages. So it just makes sense that people that are coming to our website um, from all over the world, that they'd have the opportunity to also use this app in a yeah. way that helps them in their relationships. Uh, that makes sense. I think the idea of getting the app in more languages just helps increase the reach, but then also the help that the app can provide. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. So it, unless somebody's been under a rock for the last year and a half or so, <laughs> there's been this little buzz of this small thing called uh, AI technology and, and, you know, it's being used all over the world in all sorts of different industries and things. So next question is specific to Love Nudge is, are you guys using AI technology at this time, or are you planning to sometime in the future? We are not uh, currently using it in the app. So the app does not have any AI technology right now. Um, it really just helps the user from a manual standpoint of entry, um, not only determine their love language. So the love language quiz is embedded in the app and helps them to then link to their partner and uh, under better understand um, their the love language of their, their partner or their um, significant other. Mm -hmm. And, um, but when it comes to AI, you know, we're always, like I said, we're creative and we're always looking for ways we can improve. Um, we probably, uh, I don't think that we would gen go into sort of like a, um, gender, 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 <laughs> <can't even> <laughs> uh, generative, yeah. uh, AI in terms of it's actually creating or writing things out. But what we might do is utilize it to recognize patterns. So for example, we could fine tune some of the goal recommendations based off of things where the love tank goes up that are related mm -hmm. to certain goals. We could have it sort of read the data a little bit and then help improve the experience and based on the nuances and behavior patterns of the customers that are using it. So we're not there yet. Um, and it is new. Uh, none of that is actually a guarantee that we're going to use it, but it's something that we're exploring and it's certainly an exciting um, uh, thing to think about on the horizon. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And I think you just pointed out some great ways AI can be used uh, with you guys. And then my next question, I enjoy asking people because it's great to see people in the industry kind of flipping that and looking more dating industry as a whole. But do you see potential concerns related to the use of AI? in the dating industry as a whole? Well, I'm not a, I'm not an AI expert yet. So, I mean, I've been dabbling a little bit, been, been reading a lot of articles. I'm still learning. Um, I mean, if people can, you know, blow up the world with it, <laughs> then maybe they could blow up their relationships. I don't know. But, um, but in terms of the industry in general, I think that, um, you know, as, as an app, I can speak for us. Um, as an app, we're always looking for ways to stay current and to enhance our user experiences and our efficiencies. And, and to that extent, uh, the development team that I work with, um, we're a lot of times we're early adopters of things. And so we like to, to get out there, um, see, you know, how things can be used, but then we decide how to move forward with those. So yeah. rather than focusing on the threats of AI at this point, we're going to choose to focus more like on the opportunities yeah. of how it can further our personal mission which is to improve relationships. And so I'm sure there's people in the dating industry that could use that to uh, game the system or in a way that probably isn't super helpful or might even be a little bit evasive, but that's mm -hmm. not our intention. And that's not yeah. where we want to go oh, with AI. Great. Yeah, and good feedback. And listen, I think we're all learning at this point in terms of the impact and, and the good and the bad that comes along with it. So it'll be interesting to see how the industry continues to adapt um, with everything. Excellent. So last question for you, uh, Zach, is just simply, are there any misconceptions about Love Nudge that you'd like to clear up? Well, uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, um, just Love Nudge is, is, should never be used as a vindictive tool. 
Mm -hmm. um, it should be used in that way. It should really be used by healthy people in a healthy relationship. If you're, if a person's relationship is unhealthy or you're dealing with a narcissist or you're dealing with some type of dysfunction in a relationship, the app may not work best for you. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily a misconception. It's just, Hey, can you honestly use it in a way mm -hmm. that's healthy, and productive, and really giving grace to that other person and working with them. So not getting upset if the love tank goes down about, you know, 25% a day, like right. what? I'm trying, like literally just saying, have, having conversations, communicating, learning to talk about those things. So that would be one. But one of the other ones that I think is, is quite, uh, when it comes to the five love languages, a lot of people tend to have this misconception is the love languages are about me. And I think that's because a lot of people have taken the quiz and they're like, I know my love language now. Now, everybody, you speak it. And that's true. You can communicate that. But the real power of the love languages is found in, in not focusing on yourself and directing your attention towards another person. It's, it's saying, wow, my love language might be quality time, but your love language might be words of affirmation. And our propensity with the love language is often to speak our own language, so what we think what makes us feel loved is what we show to other people. And so like, if I think quality time makes other everyone else feel loved just because it makes me feel loved, then I'm doing quality time for people. And if they're a words of affirmation person or they're an acts of service person or receiving gifts or a physical touch, then I'm totally missing the mark. Right. And um, so instead of it being about me, it's about learning the love language of someone else and being willing to speak it, even if that doesn't come naturally to me. Sometimes we have to learn, you know, yeah. there's a lot of people that probably haven't grown up in homes where, where complimentary words were spoken or maybe quality time or even physical touch in the sense of like hugs and, and care and just, you know, high fives, whatever. And so they're uncomfortable with some of those things. But if that's the person you're in a relationship with, and that's their love language, it serves us best to learn how to do that. And we might learn how to do that in very small ways at first, but if we really want our love, life, our love life and our relationships to thrive, then we need to learn how that it's not just about me and what I can get out of them. I'm not using the love languages to get something. I'm using the love languages to better connect with people. And so yeah. my focus outward is, is probably one of those biggest misconceptions that people have. Um, and that's probably one of the most important because it's yeah. really not about us at the heart. It's about how we can love other people well. And inadvertently, when the other people know that they love us well, and then it just, you know, the cycle continues and it just yeah. continues to grow and strengthen relationships. So, and then the last one is you just got to do the work. That's a misconception. You know, like I said, offline, off the app, technology is not going to improve your relationship. You improve your relationship. This is just a tool to help you get there. Yeah. I mean, listen, if uh, anybody could invent the gym app that does the work for you, the dating app that does the work for you, I think we'd be uh -huh. multi-billionaires and out on our yacht or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's the time. app. If anyone's listening and wants to develop that app, do it right. now. Yeah. Call me. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Well, Zach, thank you so much uh, for joining today and for giving us amazing color on Love Nudge and everything. And I think maybe it'd be great another three or six months to do a check in and see what the latest is, especially as AI continues to shape things. But we're thankful for your time. Excited to see where the future of Love Nudge takes you and just love how different it is from most of everything else out there and what you're doing. So I think it's a great application out there for the team. Well, thanks, Matthew. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it.